Hey everyone, Louis here from the CS team. Today I'm very excited to walk you through how you can work with arrays inside Xamarin. I'm going to show you how you can update a record with lists of items inside our database, how to query for specific values inside our arrays, and how to make data transformations using a forge loop and data transform in our arrays. And I have here a database table. Let me show you the schema. So I have here an array of texts, which is an array of single values. And I also have an array of objects. And arrays are represented by its values or its key value pairs being wrapped in these brackets. And in our table view, we can also see that we're working with arrays when this add new record button is visible. So what we're going to do now is add a new value to this list from our API. And the first thing that we need to do here is to create an input that's going to provide the ID of the record that we are going to update. I'm also going to create a text input that I'm going to call single. That's the value that I'm going to be passing to that list. The first step here is a get record because we want to preserve the existing values of that list. So I'm going to get the record by the ID. So I'm going to be referencing the input here. And I'm also going to need an added record that I'm also going to be picking from the ID input over here. So we're going to update this array text field. So first we need to reference this to this get record to pull the existing values. So get record dot array texts, and we're going to apply a filter. We have many array filters that are very helpful here, but now we are looking for the push filter. And what it does is that it pushes an element to the end of the array and returns the new array. And the value is going to be the input because we're going to push that value to the end of the list. So the ID is going to be one, the value is going to be nachos. When we run, let's go to our database and refresh. And there we go. Now we're going to add two new records to this list. So basically we're adding a list to another list. So let's go ahead and update the input to list. I always also change the name. So update the preferences. Okay, so now let's send this over here, this values, and then we get an error. Because this error means that we're sending an array when a single value is expected. And this is happening because the push filter pushes a single value to the end of the array. So what we need is the merge filter, because then we're going to merge an array from the inputs to the array in the database. So the value is going to be list over here, update, save. And now we can run. Let's go to our database and refresh. And there you go. And how does it work if you're dealing with an array of objects? So first let's get rid of this input because I'm going to use an object input. And here we have to match the exact schema that you can see in the database. In our database, we have a text field and you also have a text field that is an array. Remember the brackets? So let's match here. We have food as text and ingredients as on a list of texts. That's great. Now we're going to add it, the other column over here, and we're going to do the same. We're going to be keeping the existing record. So get array dot array of objects. And now the, the same way we did before, if we decide to go for a push, if you have um, an object of single values, and you can use merge if you have a list of objects. So let's go for push because we only have 
one of them. And the value is going to be the object input. Save. Now let's get the record here. So let's go ahead and try. Now we're going to reset. I'm going to update now the ID number three. Let's just change this over here. Run. Let's go to our database. And now we have another object included in this list. Great. Now that we have learned how we work with database edits, let me show you how we can add or remove values from variables. So I have here this a variable called array singles var. So this is what we get. We have a list of texts. So the function stack, I added this function, add to the beginning, add to the array. So I'm adding this value to the beginning of this list. I'm also adding this value to the end of the list. So let's see. Okay. And following here, I add this value that is adding the first item. So remove from the beginning and returning this value as the variable. And I'm also removing this from the end of the array and return this value in this variable. So when you use the debugger, we have this a list already updated and we have remove me beginning the tofu and remove ending soba. Great. So now that we have learned how to add single values to the beginning of the end of the array, let me show you how you can add another array to an existing array. Basically what we're doing is merging two arrays. So we have two variables here. One is array objects var. So we have this objects over here and I have another array of objects with these two values. So I'm applying here a function that is um, the name equation, array, merge. So I'm setting here to merge uh, the model variable to the array object variable over here. And when we run, we have the entire variable. And now we're going to see how we can query for specific values inside this array. So let's see what we got for now. So we have this array of objects with food and ingredients. Cool. And I'm using here an array called array find first element. That's basically looking for the values in the array and returns the first found element. And the way it works is similar to a custom query inside the query or records function, except that each item of the array is represented by this dollar sign, this, and then you can access the path via dot notation. For example, here I'm saying return all the items where the path food is equal to lasagna. When I go ahead and run, I had only this item. I have also here added a find all element. So in this case, it's going to re be returning a list of items. And I did the same here. I used dollar sign this dot food, but now in the values that has pizza in this food field. Let's update here our stop the debug. And there you go. Okay. So now let's learn how we can manipulate data inside an array. So what we typically do when transforming data is that we declare a variable that is an empty array that is going to host all the items of this array with the transformed data. And then we apply a for each loop to this array. And then we do the data transformations and add to the end of this array. So what I'm doing here is updating all the values of this field called food and making this uppercase and then adding the transform a value to the end of this empty array. So when we run and there you go. 
we have all the items already updated. And another thing that you can do is to leverage Xeno Transform to make your data transformations inside arrays much more performant. So here I'm creating a variable and the value is the array that I'm going to modify. And I'm using here a set filter. And as a value, you need to specify the field. And to learn more about the syntax of the Zeta Transform functionality, you can refer to our documentation. Here we have many examples to use uh, the get filter and the set filter, the one that I'm using right now. And there's also videos on that on YouTube. So let's focus on our use case for now. So I'm using this uh, double dollar sign, pipe character, and the filter to upper. And we are going to also achieve the same result using Zeno Transform. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave here in the comments below. If you want to learn about our tool, you can access our awesome community. And for more videos like this um, firsthand, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're stuck with anything uh, during your building, uh, feel free to reach out to live support chat within your platform. And I'll see you in the next video.